Joining us on the phone is Peter LaBarbera, president of Americans for Truth about homosexuality. Hey, Peter. Hey, David. Hey, so tell me, what's the one-liner about, how would you describe your organization? What do you do? Uh, we're a single-issue organization that's on the other side of the debate over homosexuality in the culture. Which is the other side? Remind me. The other side is the massive gay rights movement, <laughs> which most Americans are probably uh, vastly exposed to. Uh, we're on the pro-family side. We oppose, uh, for example, gay marriage, um, and we oppose the idea that homosexuality is the basis for civil rights. So tell me about what's the truth about, maybe you alluded to it there, what is the truth about homosexuality that, that people just don't seem to know, or at least people not part of your group? Well, we would, we would claim that the truth is that homosexuality is about behavior, that it's not an inborn identity. Uh, I've met, in my experience working on this issue for 20 years, probably 50 former homosexuals, <laughs> people who once considered themselves gay and have left the lifestyle. So it's about changeable behavior, which we believe uh, is immoral. And, do, and people so need, I, do people need therapy to change the behavior? Do they just need to say, do, is it a religious thing? Do they need to find well, Jesus? Know, it, 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 there's, I don't think there's a way into homosexuality, one way in. I don't think there's one way out. Some people uh, do have therapy, and it's interesting that the gay activist movement is sort of trying to shut down the idea of therapy to get out. But there's other people I've talked to, um, for example, a lot of committed Christians who uh, right. basically left homosexuality ba on the basis of, of their religious beliefs. They have a, a newfound faith in God, and, they, and that's how they get out without therapy. Now, I think you, you did mention this, but of course your organization is pro-family, right? Absolutely. Of course. Okay. And, so why are you boycotting McDonald's now? Well, we're boycotting McDonald's. This is, this is sort of a lonely fight, I think, because we're, we're not a large organization. But McDonald's has just begun running an, an ad in France, which is sort of a, an affirmative ad of youth homosexuality. In other words, it's, a, it's an ad about a, a, a boy, a teenage boy, who sort of has a boyfriend in his all-boys school. I've seen it. And, it's, and the message is, come as you are. In other words, uh, being gay as a, as a teenage boy having a romantic relationship with another boy is a good thing, and we're going to encourage it at McDonald's. And we believe that that's a, a bad message for young people, especially given what I said before, that uh, people do not, homosexuality is not something that you basically are. It's, it's more of a behavior. Now, hold on and a it, second. I think we saw the same ad. I don't know that, it sounds a little, a little odd to me to say that the ad is promoting that being homosexual and in a relationship is a good thing. I, I thought what it was saying was just that, if you are homosexual, McDonald's is not going to discriminate against you, and, and you are well as welcome here as anybody else. Right. Well, that's two ways to look at it, David, and we might have to agree to disagree on that one. I, our position is that homosexual behavior is aberrant behavior. Hmm. And so when you do a whole commercial, which is basically affirming youth homosexuality, which still remains controversial. I don't know if it's controversial in France, but it's controversial here in the United States. Is We're it? saying that's not, that's not a good thing. Uh, for a for a large corporation to, to affirm. So is it, in the U.S., in your opinion, is it more con controversial to be gay and under 18 than gay and over 18? Well, I can see we're probably on opposite sides of this issue, David, but what I can tell you is <laughs> many people, <laughs> and many people uh, simply do not like the idea of affirming homosexuality as, especially as sort of some sort of rigid, inborn characteristic, who you are, right. to young people. And, and in fact, what's happening in a lot of schools is schools will get pro-gay affirmation, but they'll never hear the other side of the issue. I didn't know there was another side. Well, I, just, I thought I just gave you one, which is, for example, that people can leave the lifestyle. Now, you'll have a lot of gay activists like Wayne Besson who will say, oh, that's you cannot do. You, that, those people were never gay, blah, blah, blah. What I'm saying is, if people, if you have to take at face value the idea that somebody says they're gay, that's how they define themselves, then how can you discriminate against people who said, I once was gay, but mm. I'm not gay any longer? Hey, let me ask you this. How, how old, in your experience, are people usually when they decide to start being gay? I don't know. I don't have the answer of how old they are. What I can tell you is there are surveys which show that the, the age when people are coming out as gay, as, as openly, homos, openly homosexual, has gone down significantly. I think the average age now is somewhere, you know, in the young teens or younger, perhaps. Right. And, and well, it's, I think it's... Out, I, let, let, let me finish. Please. It used to be that people would come out, like, in college or later. Right. And I think 
Part of the reason that's happening is that there is this ubiquitous propaganda more on one side of the issue uh, than on the other. Well, I'll tell you, Pete, you couldn't be more wrong. The reason people are coming out earlier is because uh, why would they wait until after high school? Because their parents would have killed them if they had found out about it, because the, the, it was just not something that was, uh, you know, they did not feel comfortable. And now as, P, as we learn more and more uh, that it's OK to be gay and it's not evil, you're not going to hell. Kids well, are more comfortable your, coming your, out earlier. That's your opinion, David. It is. No, of and, course. And, and we've heard I, I yours. You agree, and we've heard yours. I hope you would agree that, I, but I hope you would agree in the interest of balance and, and impartiality, which our public schools are supposed to be, I hope that the kids would also learn that, hey, just as there are people who are proudly gay, there are also people who are proudly out of that lifestyle. The problem is, is that a lot of the uh, institutions have sort of bought your propaganda, and they're only <laughs> teaching one side. Right. And I think in the interest of diversity, which your side probably talks a lot more of than my side, in the interest of diversity, they ought to give the other side of the question. Well, you know, it's, I was doing a little research. It seems, Peter, like your organization is, is considered so crazy that even the anti-gay movement sometimes thinks you're too extreme. I mean, the, the example well, of the election in, uh, excuse me, the election in Maine where um, you and your friend Mike Heath were basically shut out of the process by the National Organization for Marriage People. Well, it's well, amazing, well, David, is it things, not? Two things on that, David. One is your producer should have told me how strongly your pro-gay views were. But that aside... Um, listen, we're in a debate here, and I think it's interesting that the people who are doing the censoring in this debate are not the pro-family side, it's the pro-gay side. You have groups like GLAAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, which is absolutely desperate to, to make sure that no ex-gays ex -gays appear on shows like, you know, on CNN and other programs. It's not the pro-gay, it's not the side, my side, the pro-family side, which is censoring, it's your side. And my question is, what are you afraid of? I have no idea. I'll be honest. I have no idea what you're talking about. I mean, about. you're not censoring. At least you're having me on, although I wish your producer would have told me how strongly you felt on the issue. I don't, what do, I don't know what you're... I'll be honest. I don't know what... I'm not censoring anything. You know, you're... you're I'm not interrupting you. You're no, allowed to say saying. your piece. No, I, I agree. I agree. You're not censoring, but there is Good. a lot of censorship on the pro-gay side these days. Gotcha. Now, do you go undercover to gay sex clubs? No, I don't. No, I don't. What you're referring to is... We do find it interesting, and, and, and actually quite a news story, that in places <laughs> like San Francisco, you have uh, these outdoor extravaganzas on the street in which men basically walk around totally naked. Now, I don't know <laughs> where you live, but where I live, that would sort of be aberrant behavior and certainly something that people find newsworthy. And unfortunately, the liberal media, of which you may or may not be a part, David— We absolutely uh, are a part, I'll tell find you. That, it's sort of like generally find that ho-hum— and, and, you know, even here in Chicago, they have gay pride parades in which there's been actually sex acts that have been committed during the pride parade. And I'm wondering, do, do gays, are gays the only ones who get like sort of the special rights? to go prancing around naked in the streets, or is that something that's open to all Americans? I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you, I agree with you that if, if being nude in public or sex acts in public are illegal, it doesn't matter whether you're gay or straight, you've got to suffer the consequences. <laughs> I mean, I think we can agree on that, right? Well, yeah, maybe we can agree on that. If, if I were to go nude, that would, could legitimately be called a hate crime. Okay, so, I, <laughs> so, but, so you're saying you have not gone undercover to, like, leather fetish conferences and taken pictures no, I, or gay no, sex in, clubs? When I... When I first started this, when I first started doing this work, um, we we basically are banned from from gay events from getting the news out, and we wanted to get out stories which we found interesting. Right. I still think it's interesting that major hotels, for example, host leather events which which promote the most incredibly dangerous and disturbing behavior, and it's sort of treated as if it's sort of a civil rights issue, you know. And we think it's a legitimate story that there is this radicalism in the gay movement. So now, you go that, and you photograph say, those. That, that is not to say, well, you know, when we when there's an interesting story, photographs are taken. Yes, That's we right. take photographs of the annual Folsom Street Pride, <laughs> Pride Parade in San Francisco, Nancy Pelosi's home district where they actually have thousands of men who walk around nude. We think that's an interesting news story. So let but me see, I, just I, I to be say, absolutely I clear. I there, there are gays who agree with us that this is very extreme behavior and it should be exposed. Uh, Uganda is proposing legislation that will make homosexual activity punishable by life in prison for both parties engaging in the acts. Uh, do you agree with that? No, I do not. Let me be clear. We do not agree with anything that would be construed as violence or hatred towards gays. Oh. Now, wow. sodomy laws are another matter. I believe, for example, in the United States of America, 
that the Supreme Court ruling that struck down sodomy laws was wrong. I think sodomy laws should basically be according to an area of the country by the community standards, which is to say that you're never going to see New York City pass an anti-sodomy law, but if they want to pass one in, you know, Mississippi or, you know, Kansas, then they should have the right to pass behavior uh, against sodomy. That, now, that's do how you... it always was in this country. Okay, so, so yes or no, do you support the Ugandan legislation? No, I don't. I would support if there were reforms in the legislation. In other words, I think, as I understand the Uganda legislation, a part of it is just applying the same penalty to what was, for example, if a heterosexual man rapes a young girl, a child girl, I believe they would give the death penalty. Is that correct? You probably know more than I do. Well, I think so. So, in other words, if that's the law for heterosexuals, a man raping a very young girl and he gets a death penalty, then we certainly would agree that that should apply to a, a man who rapes a young boy. We don't agree to a, the death penalty for somebody caught practicing homosexuality. Gotcha. And uh, do you believe what some conservatives are saying, that legalizing gay marriage would open the door to either three-way marriages or marriages with animals? Do you, do you see that slippery slope? I don't know about marriages with animals, but I certainly believe it'll open the door to polygamy, because here's why. One of the central arguments of gay activists is, hey, it's just two, it's people who love each other. Who are you to, to, to deny them their love? Well, guess what? And you know this, and it's not just gays. It's also like, you know, some Muslims have two wives. There are, there are multiple partner couple, or what, what do you call them, truples? <laughs> yeah, it sounds <laughs> like you know much more about it than I do, Pete. I'll tell well, you. Well, 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 let me just ask you. There, there are multiple partner relationships in which they affirm their love for each other. None of so which are legal. Are we to, who are we to deny? Yeah, but so was gay marriage until about five years ago, right? Right. So why should, why should multiple partner couples... Who, who, uh, who are, are relationships who have that same love, why should that love be denied? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. I just don't, don't really see it happening. And lastly, I know we, we've had both Paul Cameron on the show, as well as the God Hates Fags people. If your organization disappeared and you had to align with one of those two, which would it be? Well, it's sort of a foolish question, David, but we have denounced the God Hates Fags guy, Fred Phelps. Right. I think, I think it's a dangerous message. I think it's not a biblical message. I don't think he's acting like a Christian. I don't think God goes around calling people fags. Um, and it's interesting to us that the, the same gay activists who denounce him, and rightly so, we have many gay activists who are quite willing to call people like me names. So maybe they should apply that same thing. Uh, uh, so I definitely think that, that uh, Fred Phelps is a wingnut, and now that he's going out and protesting funerals, I think, you know, that's, a, that's quite a way to influence people going to people's funerals with his idiotic protests. So, so you're more on the um, Paul we, Cameron side. Oh, no, I'm just saying that uh, uh, we think it's very dangerous that Fred Phelps does what he does, especially going to, to I don't think he should be made illegal, gotcha. but we just think what he does is nuts. All right, we've been speaking with Peter LaBarbera. Uh, uh, of course, we learned about truffles. We learned about all of the various uh, problems that we have with homosexuality. I do appreciate you calling in today. I, I really yeah, do. Can I give the website, David? Sure, go ahead. Sure, it's americansfortruth.org, americansfortruth.org, and you can get information.